We have here 3DS Max 2023 with a lot of new features. We will see what changed since 3DS Max 2022. To start, in modeling we have a new snap working pivot. The artist can very easily snap the transfer gizmo to an edge, vertex, edge center or face center. The gizmo will also orient automatically following the edge direction or the normals of the face. You can access these new features from a quad menu, from the icons on a new snap pivot bar or assigning shortcuts to each action. It's also possible to adjust this pivot orientation, locking and unlocking certain axes with double click. Optionally, we can as well turn on a bounding box grid for extra snapping positions. It's also possible to snap to external objects. You can snap with a visual guide or a snap automatically to whatever your mouse is over for faster assignments. It's also possible to create point helpers or grid helpers from the working pivot position to be reused later. If you model a lot in 3ds Max, for sure this new snap pivot will be super helpful for you. Retopology has been greatly improved in 2023. Now comes with a preprocessed mesh. This will digest the original mesh to reach the required polygon target faster and without errors. What you see here without preprocessed mesh was taking 84 seconds, with preprocessed mesh enabled it's 4 seconds and the results are almost identical. Retopology creates an incredible result for a total automatic retopology without needing to preprocess this mesh. In 2023, Retopology will also preserve any geometry information that you have in your model. It will preserve UVs, IDs, smoothing groups. You select what you want to preserve on the Auto Edge options. A new output menu is now available, allowing to expose the Retopology mesh or the original mesh or the mesh created by the new preprocess method. Modeling resists as well a new Occlude mode on 2022.3 and on 2023 has been further improved in performance and accuracy. It's better than before. You can see here that doesn't matter the relative size of the polygon versus the screen space, it will always be accurate and it's faster than previous versions. Smart Extrude has been improved during 2022 with partial cut-through functionality. Now all these improvements are also on Edit Poly Modifier. Some additional fixes have been done as well on a Smart Extrude on certain situations that has been enhanced and improved. On Max 2022 Update 2 and 3 we had different saving performance increases, but now in Max 2023 we have even more compression speed gains. You can see on this table that between 2022 and 2023 the speed increases are quite significant. This is without compression, but Max 2023 what changed a lot is when we turn on this compression. Max now uses a new Z standard compression engine and each data entity is compressed right away when it's generated, greatly increasing speeds on savings. Shang Eun create multiple scene tests where you can see that saving speed increases from 500% to 2500% speed gains. On Max 2023, as you can see here, when you turn on compression, has way less penalty and in some cases will be even faster than saving without compression. All these tests are done using an SSD and if you have a slower hard drive, you will experience even bigger difference when compression is on. Auto backup in 3ds Max will be now faster thanks to all these improvements on savings, but on top of that in 2023 it received a lot of love. Now we have a specific auto back bar with icons to turn on or off auto back. There is a timer with a countdown for the next auto back and a button to skip the next auto back. Auto back is also smarter. The countdown will not start until the artist interact with 3ds Max. And if you're doing any action in 3ds Max during the last 15 seconds, like moving a spinner, performing a simulation, or on a model dialogue, the clock will stop to prevent auto back to kick in while you are working. Doing right click on the auto back icon will bring you to the preference menu, and here there are some new options as well. You have the option to activate compress for auto back files, and the option to prepend the scene name on the auto back file, so each auto back file will retain the name of the file you are working on. If you are working on multiple Max sessions, now it's way more intelligent, preventing different Macs to overwrite the same auto back file. We have as well a new backup file menu, allowing you to do an auto back now, 
and to open the autobug folder. Additionally, all autobug commands can be assigned to hotkeys. We have finally a new API for displaying volumes on viewport on 3ds Max. This will be accessible to any third-party developer to be used as they want. The first one to use it is Arnold. You will need to download the latest Max 2 AI available from the webpage that is using Arnold 7.1. Creating an Arnold volume, you will see that you can load any VDB sequence and finally be able to have a good representation on viewport of the VDB grid. You can tweak opacity, colors, and the visualization makes it very easy to position on your scene and looks very good even without rendering. Arnold volumes can also visualize any grid coming on your VDB and have different built-in display options to be able to display the data that comes with it, the turbo spectrum, you can have a gradient or a black body, and as you can see you can play sequence and it's quite fast and looks very good. The other new API that I am super excited for is Instance on Viewport and Instance at Render Time API. This is very important for 3ds Max because, as you may know, 3ds Max is a 3D app with more renderers available. Until now, each renderer had to come with his own solution to instance at render time, and then each third-party tool doing particles or a scattering had different solutions for instance at render time. On these cases, or each instancer had to add support for each renderer for instance at render time individually, or the other way around. It's a lot of work for developers to support each other and you can get partial support between tools, some renderers doesn't support some scattering tools. Now, any new tool or renderer just giving support to this new one single API, they will get access to all the other tools that also support this API. This will make the life way easier to third-party developers and all artists we will enjoy way more compatibility between tools and renderers to instance millions of objects without, with a very low RAM utilization. 3ds Max now supports GLTF exports. GLTF is a very popular open source 3D file format. Now we have a new GLTF material. You can export a static meshes geometries with a big map texture. And there is a great viewport display of the GLTF material on viewport in 3ds Max. We have a available Arnold 7.1 with improved IPR interactivity, a stability improve, improve on three planar maps, updates on Alembic, faster per pixel imagers, updates on Material X, faster Bloom imager, interactive GPU is now faster, enhancements on USD, and different API additions. There are a lot of other improvements, and I suggest you to check the What's New guide and check so a complete list of new changes. You will have all these links in the description below this video. But some of these other uh, features is that we have a new layout of UV hotkeys for more cohesion, we have more tools for pipeline integration, more improvements on per viewport filtering, for example now you can have a playback while changing settings, and general fixes. All default geometry maximum number of segments has been increased greatly, there is a new max to viewport material conversion API, new Autodesk standard surface compilant mode for physical material, there are updates on EXR and open shading language, updates on security, improvements on loading times when files contain a large number of missing plugins, there is a new and improved progress bar, and multiple actions are now undoable as well, like changing object colors, disabling modifiers, disabling modifiers in viewport or in render, updated Python, improvements on Max script, and much more. Remember, check out the description links. And yeah, let's not forget that we have a new icon of 3ds Max, let me know what do you think, this is it, this is the icon. Uh, particularly, I am super fan of the new API for instance at render time, it's something I was looking a lot for a lot of years and now finally we have it. The new API to have volumes on viewport will help tremendously when, when other renderers and tools adapt it, but now we have the 3ds Max API so we'll make it way way easier. And Retopology was a game changer before and right now keeping the UVs and all these new improvements, uh, it's awesome. I, I Seriously, I think that this is a game changer for modeling in 3ds Max. And this is all guys, let me know in the comments what do you think, what is your favorite feature, if you missed something. Uh, it's 3 months since the latest update and I think that we had a lot of things for these 3 last months and more things will come for sure, uh, stay tuned, uh, subscribe on my channel if you want to know all the new stuff coming to 3ds Max, I will create some tutorials covering some of this more in depth, 
and thanks a lot to all my patrons that makes these videos possible and they get access as well to exclusive content, I do a lot of tutorials about 3ds Max and about Typhlow that they are only for my patrons. Thank you a lot guys and see you soon, bye!